I received PCBs from PCBWay for my newest project. And along with the boards, I have a pen and some stickers. Let's open the boards and take a look at what we've got. This time I went with standard green solder mask. And I also went for rounded corners this time. Whereas the 555 board had square corners. And I kept the same size mount holes so I can use these new board standoff spacer things. So I'm just trying different things as I go. Different color boards, different features, and everything looks like it came out well again. The text on the silk screen looks good. Everything looks like it came out as expected. So this time they put their internal board tracking number under a component. So it won't really be out visible with all of my regular text. So that's good. And this is a dual op amp board which just has the one 8-pin dual op-amp chip, but a lot of support components to make it flexible for prototyping. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. 10 PCBs for $5 plus shipping, up to 100 by 100 millimeters. Included in that cost, choice of solder mask colors, green, red, yellow, blue, white, or black. Check them out at PCBWay.com. I did this design in KiCad, and when the schematic was done, I brought it over into the PCB designer, and this is how it came out. I put mount holes again in the corners, and this time I decided to do rounded corners, and they came out relatively well. And there's the rendered board, but some of these footprints don't have 3D models because I got them from third-party libraries where they just made a footprint. These all rendered as male pin headers, but most of them are going to be female. So here's a bunch of potentiometers, the main output level of each op amp, the op amp itself, and all the support components. I put the design files and a PDF of the schematic on GitHub. The board is set up to use a single 8-pin dip that has dual op amps in it, and it's intended to help with prototyping so that if I want to try different op amp configurations, I can just get this board out, put an op amp that I want on there in the socket, and set up the parts for the circuit I need. So with a single 8-pin dip, we can just swap in whatever op amp we want as long as it's got the same pinouts. So just looking at a few samples, we have the OPA series. So VCC and ground are pins 8 and 4. The two op amps have these pinouts. Same with the Dual 741, the 1458 op amp, TL072 series, TLV272. And I've also set it up so I can either use a single supply or a dual plus and minus power supply. So this power input, I would give my positive supply and ground. And if I'm using a split supply, I would give my negative supply here. Otherwise, leave it unconnected. The coupling capacitors. Over here, this is just pins 4 and 8 of the op amp, the way the symbol is drawn in the schematic. So I've connected it to VCC, but for the V minus, it goes to a jumper. So if I'm using a single supply, I jumper V minus to ground. If I'm using a split supply, I would jumper V minus to VSS, my negative supply. It's basically two identical circuit blocks here with a lot of excess stuff on it. One feeds into the other, but each one can be isolated. We have connectors or jumpers everywhere. So I can either use regular DuPont wires and headers to bring in signals and ground. If I'm using audio, I can bring in audio. Or if I'm using a sensor that I need to scale up a bit or filter, I can bring that in here. But if I'm doing specifically audio, I can bring in audio from an audio jack here. And the way I have this input header set up, Depending what configuration of op amp, I can either jumper this audio jack to the non-inverting or the inverting input path. I don't have all the components yet, so I'm just going to populate a few for a simple test. For example, I don't have these audio jacks yet, but these footprints are for specific jacks I ordered, and they take these quarter-inch phone plugs. So I can bring audio in and or bring audio out through this style plug, and do some signal conditioning with the op amp, whether it's a simple buffer, amplifier, tone shaper, or whatnot. Or if I'm not doing audio specifically, if I just need this to do signal conditioning on a sensor, 
There's 0.1 inch headers all over the place. Headers and sockets are going to be distributed. So I can just use DuPont wires to jumper around as needed. And the input jack happens to be over on the right, and the output is over on the left. Which, at least for me, is a little counterintuitive. Normally I would probably do the input on the left, output on the right. Just like how we tend to draw schematics, input to output, left to right. But the reason for that, if I'm going to be doing audio with wiring like this, it's probably going to be in a signal chain like this. So it tends to have input on the right, output on the left. So you would have a little patch cord, like so, going between devices. So guitar audio effects may be one thing I end up trying with this. I didn't put a foot switch on here. It's really just meant to be a bench prototyping platform with easy connectivity. I don't even have a DC power jack. I'll have to DuPont power in. The output of this whole op amp area comes to another header. So here if I want to keep the signal on board and feed it to a different op amp circuit, I can jumper the signal into the next op amp right here. And if my circuit really only needs one op amp and I just want to get the signal over to this output audio jack, I can just set this up as a unity gain buffer or even just an amplifier with simple gain and get the signal back out. Another option here, maybe all I want to do is take audio in or another signal in, do some signal conditioning, then send it off to another board like a Teensy for further processing. So here I can use DuPont wires and take the signal out and ground, bring it to an audio input or an ADC input on a Teensy or something, process it, and then bring it back and then feed that into the next op amp. And whatever I want to do, do I need to do something else or just buffer it and get it on to the output? So I can either use regular DuPonts again to get the signal out, or I can use the audio jack. The idea here with all of these parts connected in parallel and going in weird feed forward and feed back paths and networks, a couple of potentiometers, jumpers, all of these components as drawn are just more placeholders representative of what could be put here. And if we don't need a component, we just leave it out. Or if we need to bypass a component, we can just put jumpers in. The idea is some parts are going to be through hole male headers. Some are going to be female headers. So the male headers would maybe accept a jumper across various pins or just plug in a female DuPont. The female headers can allow swapping in various through-hole components. If we bend the pins so it's a vertical cornrow style, you would just insert the components like that and try things out. And if it's time to actually commit a board to a soldered final circuit, we would just not use headers on the final board. We could mount the component directly. The reason I chose 2 pin 0.1 inch spaced and having to do components vertically like this as opposed to the regular axial way, well, it takes less space so I can cram more parts onto a given board. But also, if I want to go surface mount, I can hand solder a resistor or capacitor or diode right across the 0.1 inch through hole pins. So I figured this gives me the most flexibility. And the intention for the op amp chip is to put a through hole socket and then for any dual op amp packages that are pin compatible I can swap out different op amps and try those as well. Maybe sometimes I need one with JFET inputs, maybe sometimes I need a different one that's specifically good for low noise, whatever. So I broke off a few of these two pin just to get enough on here to do a simple circuit tryout, but I did order a bunch of specific two pin female headers. Otherwise, looking at some other features on the board. So some parts like these kinds of various potentiometers I've had around for years and years, and there's no sense in designing a new board where I'm only going to have so many of them made for now anyway in one batch, rather than designing it where I need to buy new potentiometers, I'm going to try to make these designs over the next while so that they actually are specifically for parts I already have in stock. They can still be used for brand new purchased parts. The parts hopefully are not that special, but I might as well use what I've already got. I have several potentiometers on here, and I have two main board footprints for them. The one with the two offset rows 
can take these two potentiometers. So I also tried to place things so that the parts will have enough clearance around them. Like right here, the chip now is right up against that pot. Out of these other trimmer pots where they just have a single row of pins, this one, for example, the pins are too far apart for this. I'd have to try wedging them over and it wouldn't really easily go down in. One that does have the correct pin spacing happens to be vertical. So this is what I'm going to really use. But if there's a horizontal one, I can also accommodate that. So that's why it looks like these parts are sometimes in the middle of nowhere with dead space. Let's say I just want to build this and I want to try different resistor combinations for whatever reason. We need the non-inverting pin grounded, and then we need a feedback resistor from out to inverting, and another resistor in series with the input. So here, if we pretend all of these parts are not populated in the jumpers, we can throw a resistor in R5 to get from the output to the inverting input. Then we can populate a resistor in R8 to get our series input resistor, and then jumper over to our input. We need the non-inverting input grounded, so there's nothing connected around here, there's nothing connected here. We would just jumper this down to ground. If we just want a unity gain buffer, we just put a wire from out to inverting in and just feed the input, jump it over to the non-inverting input. Say we want a difference amplifier. Very similar, we need a feedback resistor to inverting input series resistor input. The second input has what looks like a voltage divider to ground, and the output of the voltage divider is the non-inverting input. Our inverting input would have a feedback resistor, a series resistor, and then jumper to an input. The other input, we would use this series resistor, and then we can install this resistor to ground and jumper this. Differentiator and integrator circuits, same as an inverting amplifier, but we just throw a capacitor in one or the other resistor position instead of two resistors. If I want a series capacitor, I can put it in any of these series inputs. As long as I jumper out what I don't need and just have a capacitor in series with this inverting input. We can also make a square wave oscillator. Here we have a resistor to the inverting input and a capacitor to ground, and then a voltage divider from the output to ground, which feeds back to the non-inverting input. So I could throw a resistor in the feedback loop here. Then I need a capacitor to ground. I just throw a capacitor in one of these paths and jumper the other, and then I have a capacitor to ground. Now I need a voltage divider between output and ground and the non-inverting input. So I could put two resistors here and jumper this capacitor, or I've got this potentiometer if I want an adjustable divider. So I come from the output, I can jumper this to a potentiometer to ground, take the wiper, and so I would leave R21 open, put a jumper in R22 over to this non-inverting input. This circuit here gives me a precision rectifier, which can be used for things like a peak detector, envelope detector, maybe a topic for the future. But here we have two different feedback paths from the output and a couple of diodes. So here I could populate a diode directly to the op amp output back to the inverting input. Then I can have a series diode and a feedback resistor from the output of that diode back to the inverting input, just like this. And as usual, a series resistor and a jumper to ground, and there's a precision rectifier. All the rest of this, if I want an amplifier with gain, there's a potentiometer option here with the feedback output. If I'm not using a diode, this would just be jumpered, so it's the same as having this directly on the output. If I'm doing audio circuits, I may want a series DC block capacitor within and or output. I can also use these networks here for high pass or low pass filtering. And if I'm working with single supply, so I just have VCC and ground, but I want to work with AC signals, Instead of referencing the inputs to ground, I need to reference to half of VCC or so. So if this is my amplifier configuration and I have an AC input, single supply, I'm going to want to put a voltage divider here to VCC and ground. Say it's 5 volts and ground, so this will be 2.5 volts. And then my AC signal can swing plus and minus centered at 2.5 volts. Otherwise, the signal gets clipped. 
So that's the other use for this potentiometer right here. I would jumper the potentiometer over to the VCC rail, and then I have a divider to ground, and I can connect this with whichever input I need, and adjust this to the center, and have my signal biased halfway to VCC, and I can get an AC signal amplified. These reverse connected diodes in the feedback loop, as well as the output to ground, provide an option for signal shaping, so those can allow clipping a signal. Part of doing audio effects, if I put in an audio signal here, and I have some clipping diodes here, I can create overdrive and distortion effects. And having this in a prototyping platform, I can easily swap different diodes in, even LEDs, and see how it changes the overall circuit. Having audio jacks here and having everything on a mostly securely connected board instead of a breadboard with wires all over the place, it'll just make prototyping a lot easier. With limited parts available, here's a few quick tests. I have an op amp in the inverting configuration with a 10k feedback resistor and a 1k input series resistor on the inverting input. So the gain should be about minus 10 divided by 1 or minus 10. Or an inverted signal 10 times bigger. The waveform is jumping around so I'm just going to pause. The smaller input trace is about 0.15 volts peak to peak. The output trace is 1.5 volts peak to peak and it's inverted. So that's the expected output for this configuration. If I take a couple of diodes reverse parallel and put those in the feedback loop, before I do that, here's an example of using this potentiometer here to change the bias voltage where I'm using a single supply, so I need to bring the non-inverting input up to 2.5 volts so the input can swing positive and negative without clipping itself. So I just need to change the pot. I'm going the wrong way, so it's clipping. It can only go positive, not negative. So I change the bias until it looks like a non-distorted output waveform. Now I put a diode in the feedback loop, and we're clipping off the top of the waveform gently. So that's a soft clipping. If I add another diode in reverse parallel, I should be able to clip the bottom as well. So this diode goes this way. I don't have all the female headers here, so I'm just laying those in and using gravity to keep the pins making contact with the pads. So now we're clipping the top and the bottom of the waveform. And it's not symmetrical, which may be just a property of this circuit configuration, or it could be the biasing. I'm just blindly configuring this right now just for a simple demo. So I take the diodes back out, and we see a normal sine wave restored. Now I have a 1K resistor in the feedback loop, a 1 micro in series with the inverting input, making a differentiator. So with a square wave in, we get spikes out. When I get the rest of the parts in to make the intended final circuit, we'll revisit this op amp dev board. But it looks like the general design of it worked out just fine. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project. Thanks for checking out the project, and if you're interested in seeing how it unfolds when I get the rest of the pieces, consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. Stay tuned for future videos on this topic.